Hello Divination and welcome. In this video we have a giveaway. Right now if you go to the link in the description below you can go ahead and download a free book preview landing page layout including anchor links and call to actions. But not only that, in this video I'm also going to show you how to build this layout. So without wasting a lot of time let's dive in and let's get started. All right, so let's start by creating a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here to pages, click on add new. We're going to give a page a name. So I'm just going to call this free book preview Divi landing page. Click on use Divi builder. So the very first thing we need to do here is to click on build from scratch. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And then we're going to go into our section settings. So I'm going to click here on this gear icon. And now I need to go into design size, no spacing, because here we need to add a padding of zero pixels, both to the top and the bottom. So I'm going to activate my chain here. Next, I'm going to choose my column structure. So I'm going to save here, click this plus button to add our rows. So the column structure we're going to go with is this one right here. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. So now it's time to customize our columns. So I'm just going to close this for now and then go into the row settings. So here we want to go into our first column and add a background color. So I'm going to click on this little gear icon click on background. So the color we're going to add here is white. So I'm going to select white. Next, we're going to go into the third column and add a gradient. So I'm going to click here on this back button, click on the third column, and I'm going to click on the second tab. So here I'm going to click on this plus button and add my first color for the gradient. So I'm just going to highlight this, delete it, and then paste my color in here. Now, if you want to use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. Next, I'm going to click here on the second color. And again, I'm going to paste it like that. Now, for the gradient type, we're going to set it to linear. And then finally, here on the direction, we're going to set this to 166. Now, we need to go into the main uh, row settings. So I'm going to click back here. So now that I'm in the row settings, we're going to start by uh, adding our gutter width. So I'm going to come over here to design sizing, and then I'm going to activate use custom gutter width, and we're going to set this to one. Now the gutter width is the distance or the gaps between the columns. So we want absolutely no gaps here. So that's why I've set it to one. Next, we're going to come over here to equalize column heights. I'm going to set that to yes. And then for the column width and uh, max width, we're going to set these both to 100%. So here on the max width, I'm going to set this to 100% as well. Now it's time to go to spacing and add our padding. So I'm going to click here on spacing. So over here on the top padding, we're going to set this to 0VW. And this also needs to be the same for the bottom. So I'm just going to add it here, activate my chain. So now my value has been added both to the top and the bottom. Now we can go to our column one and column two paddings. So again, I'm just going to go back over here to my content. So I'm going to start here with column one. So I'm going to click here, click on design. So I'm going to start with uh, the top padding, uh, which needs to be 15 VW. So I'm going to enter it manually here. And um, the bottom padding also needs to be 15 VW. So I'm going to activate this chain. Now, we also need to add the sizes for the tablets and the desktop. So to do that, I'm going to click here on this little icon here, click on the tablet. And then over here, we need to set it at 10 VW. Activate the chain as well. And that needs to be the same also for the mobile phones. Okay, so I'm going to go back here to my desktop. So next, we're going to go and add our padding to column two. So I'm gonna, again, I'm going to click here on this gear icon, click on design, spacing. And then here, I'm going to also add my bottom padding, which is 15 VW. And I might as well add the sizes for the desktop and the tablets for the bottom padding. So I'm going to click on this gear icon, click on the tablet. And then here, it needs to be 10 VW. Great. And that needs to be the same as well for the phone. Now we're going to go back to column one because we need to add a left padding of 7 VW. So I'm going to click here on this uh, back arrow, click on column one, design, spacing. And for the left padding, we're going to set this to 7 VW. Right. So the next step now is to add uh, some CSS. So we're going to start off by adding a CSS ID to column two. So I'm going to come over here and click this gear icon, click on advanced, custom CSS. And for the CSS ID, in fact, I need to be here on CSS ID and classes. So here for my CSS ID, I need to set it as style scroll bar. So the next thing we're going to do is to allow the column to be scrollable by adding the following lines of CSS code to the main element. So I'm going to come over here to custom CSS. And then on the main element, I'm going to paste the CSS code. Now, if you want to copy uh, or use the exact CSS code as I'm using here, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. Now it's time to add our content. So I'm going to save here, 
and then save one more time. So here on the column one, we're gonna need to add a text module. So I'm just gonna search for it, select it. And in here, all we need to add here is a text which says navigate to chapter. Now let's go and customize our text. So we're gonna come over here to the design tab and then I'm gonna click on text. So for the font here, it needs to be later. So I'm gonna search for it. And this is a free font, by the way. You could just download it by searching for it here. Next, I'm gonna add my color, which is going to be a dark gray. So I'm gonna come over here to my text color, click on this eyedropper tool, and then paste my color like that. Next, I'm gonna come over here to text size, and we're gonna set this to 1.6 VW. And now we might as well add the sizes for the tablet and the phone. So I'm gonna click here on this little icon, click on tablet, and here it needs to be set to 3VW. And for the phone, it needs to be 4VW. Next, we're gonna come over here to line height and set this to 2EM. Right, so we're done here, I'm gonna save. Next, we're gonna add a divider module. So I'm gonna click this plus button right below the heading that we've just uh, added and search for my divider module here. I'm gonna select it. And then here we wanna make sure that show divider is set to yes. And that divider line needs to have a specific color. So I'm gonna click here on design line and then we're gonna give it a color. I'm gonna paste my color in here. Now let's go to the divider weight because right now it's a bit too thin. So I'm gonna come over here to sizing and for the weight, we're gonna increase this to about four pixels. And here on the width, instead of leaving it at auto, we're gonna set it to three VW. Then we're gonna go in for the tablet and smartphone sizes as well. So here on the tablet, we're gonna set it to six VW. And for the phone, we're gonna set it to nine VW. Okay, so that's looking better. Right, so the next thing we're gonna do now is to um, add a height to this. Over here, we're gonna set this to zero pixels. Now let's go to spacing and add some margins, both to the top and the bottom. So I'm gonna click here on spacing. So I'm gonna start here with top margin of one VW and bottom margin of seven VW. So as we did before, we're gonna come in and also add our sizes for our tablet and also for the phone. Right, so for the top margin here, I'm gonna set this to three VW and for the phone, I'm gonna set it to four VW. So over here, we're done, I'm gonna save this. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is to add a text module onto the second column. So I'm gonna click this plus button, search for my text module, select it. So I'm gonna add a bit of text here. So I'm just gonna get rid of all this text. Uh, I'm gonna add this symbol here and add chapter one research. Right, so the next thing we need to do is to link this entire module to an anchor ID. So I'm gonna come over here to link. So this is the structure of how the link is gonna be. So it's uh, your, your, your website.com, the page title, and then chapter one. So this is how you need to replace this with your actual website, the page title, and the chapter. Next, we're gonna go into our text settings. So first of all, I'm gonna change my font here to Leto, and it should be up here because we've used this already, so I'm gonna select it. And here on the font weights, we're gonna set this to light, and the color as before. In fact, I can just come over here to my recent colors and select my gray. On the text size, we're gonna set this to 1.3 VW. Now let's go to spacing and add some padding. So I'm gonna come over here to spacing. And for the padding here, I'm gonna set this to one VW. And this needs to be both for the top and the bottom. And then I'm gonna save. Right, so now I'm just gonna drag this into position. So I'm just gonna come over here, drag it below this divider. And that, that's where it needs to be. Okay, so moving on. So we need to clone the text module twice. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna come over here and click this um, duplicate module twice like that. And then all we need to do now is to go in and make sure that our chapters here are updated. So this needs to be chapter two. And this one here needs to be, and notice that I'm doing inline editing here. This needs to be chapter three. And also you want to make sure that you change the links as well. So you wanna come over here on the link here. This needs to go to chapter two. I'm gonna save that. And then the last one here needs to link to chapter three. So make sure you update those links, otherwise this won't work. Great. Okay, so now that we have all this set, now we're going to go to, the, to add a text module to column two and add some content. So I'm gonna come over here, click this plus button and uh, s select my text module. So the first thing I'm gonna do is to, in fact, I'm gonna go to lorem two and get some dummy text. So I'm just gonna copy this whole text here, bring it back over here and then just paste it like that. And then over here, we could also gonna give this a title. So let's give this a title of chapter one research. 
Now, this chapter one research needs to be set to heading two. So over here, I'm going to highlight it and click on this drop down and set this to heading two. Now, we need to give this a background color of white. So I'm going to scroll down here, click on background and set my background color to white. Now, let's head over to the text settings. So I'm going to click here on design text. So I'm going to start off by changing my font here to Leto. Now, for my text size, I'm going to set this to 0.8 VW. The line height is going to be 1.7. In fact, I need to redo this. Uh, this needs to be 0 0.8. And the line height needs to be 1.7 VW. Now it's time to customize heading 2. So to do that, I'm just going to scroll down here to heading text. Select heading 2. And then I'm also going to change this from default to Leto. Not sure why this is asking me to log in. Let me save this page for now. Make sure I don't lose anything. Right, so here on uh, the, the weight, we're going to set this to heavy. And then we're also going to set up our color here. So I'm going to click on add color and I'm going to paste my color in here. Now, if, again, if you want to use the exact same colors as I'm using, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. So let's go ahead and add our text size. So over here, let's set it to 2VW and the line height, we're going to set this to 2.3VW. Now, this is so that uh, we have, you know, some distance space between the heading here and the text that we have on the bottom. Right, so the next thing we're going to do is to head over here to the spacing because we need to add some margins so that uh, we have enough breathing space around our text. So let's start with our top margin and we're going to set this to 2VW and this is going to be both to the top and the bottom. For the left margin, we're going to set this to 5VW and again, this needs to be both to the, uh, to the both sides, left and right. Next, I'm going to come over here to padding and we're going to set this to 6VW. And this needs to be both to the top and the bottom as well. So notice that the sizes I'm adding here are crucial in making our content here easier to read. And then finally, I'm going to add my left and right padding over here. And again, it's going to be 6VW. Now let's add a bit of styling to this. So I'm going to come over here to box shadow and I'm going to go with this first option. So over here on the blur strength, because right now it's at 18 pixels, it's not really much. So I'm going to increase that to about 50 pixels. And then I'm also going to adjust the shadow color. So over here, I'm just going to scroll down, click here on this um, tool, and then I'm just going to highlight what's in the, uh, between the brackets and then paste it like that. So as you can see, it's very, very subtle. It's not uh, too overbearing. Now let's add our CSS ID. I'm going to click here on the advanced tab, click on CSS ID, paste my CSS ID, which is going to be called chapter one, and then we're going to save. So what we're going to do next is to clone this twice. So I'm going to do this. So let's have a look here. And you can see my scrolling effect here has really slowed down, which is really, really cool. Then I'm going to do it one more time. So now we have three chapters that we've just added to this. So what we need to do next is just to come over here and rename these. So this is chapter two. So we can call this strategy. So what we also need to do here is to go into chapter two and chapter three and also add the CSS ID. So I'm going to go into the settings, click on advanced, CSS ID and classes. And here, instead of uh, leaving it at chapter one, we need to set it to chapter three. I mean, chapter two, sorry. I'm going to save that. And then you want to go to the third one as well and add chapter three to the third one. And then we're going to save. Now over here on the third column, we need to add a text module. So I'm going to search for it and then select it. So what we need to add in here is just a bit of text, which says want to read the entire thing. So I'm just going to replace this. Now let's customize our text by going over here to the design tab and clicking on text. So as you can see here, it's quite difficult to read this text. So we need to make some adjustments to this. So first of all, let's change our text from default to Leto. Uh, we're going to change our font weight to heavy, change the color to white. Now it's easier to read. And on the text size, we're going to set this to 2VW. We're going to give this a line height of 2VW as well. And then for the text orientation, we're going to set this to centered. Now let's head over to uh, spacing. So I'm gonna scroll down here, click on spacing. So what we need to do here is to add some padding both to the left and the right. And this is gonna be 2VW. So the next thing we're gonna do is to add a button module to column three. So I'm gonna save this for now. Then I'm gonna click this plus button to add my button module. I'm gonna select it. And in this button here, we're just gonna add some text which says buy now. Now let's customize this, uh, this button. So I'm going to come over here to design alignment. So first of all, we need to center it. And now to modify the button settings, we need to come over here to button and activate custom styles for button. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do here is to start with the text size. So we're going to set this to 1VW. I'm going to change my button text color. I'm going to paste my color in here. 
And then for the background color, I'm gonna set this to white. I click on this plus button and add my white as well. In fact, my text color, let me just update that one more time. There we go. So the border here is not really needed. So I'm just gonna drag this until I get zero on my border. And now let's add our border radius. So these styles here are optional. You can go in and add them if you want to. But of course, if you want to leave it as it is, it's fine as well. So here, I'm just going to set this to 10VW. Okay, so I'm just going to scroll here so you can see the button. Okay, and button letter spacing, we're going to set, we're going to, it's fine at zero. And for the font, we're going to set this to ultra bold because right now it's not... Um, easy to read. So now that really makes it stand out. And we're also going to make it all uppercase. Now, as you can see, the button here is way too close to our text. So why don't we customize that by going into spacing? So I'm going to scroll down here, go into spacing. So here is where we need to add our margins and our padding. So I'm going to start here with the top margin of 2VW. Next, we're going to add the padding. So the padding here for the top is going to be 1VW. And it's going to be the same for the bottom as well. So I'm just going to activate the chain. And then for the left and right padding, same thing. It's going to be 3VW. Activate the chain. So now you can see the style of our button looks is looking much better. And the spacing be, uh, around the button is also great. Right. So pretty much that's all we need to do here. So um, I'm going to save this. And here on the top, we might as well add some padding. Because the text here is way up there. So by just adding some padding here. We can just uh, place this wherever we want. And I think it's great here. And then finally, what you want to do here is to add some CSS code to style the uh, scroll bar. So you want to click here on this gear icon, click on advanced custom CSS and paste your CSS code in here. Now, as I mentioned before, if you want to use the exact same CSS code as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. Okay, so now that I've added my CSS code, Let's do a quick preview. Okay, so this is our final design. You can see we have our links here to the different pages. And when I scroll here, you can see that the scroll speed is actually nice and smooth. And then over here, this can link to, you know, wherever you want to, whatever page you have to buy this actual book. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.